de Global Latin Factor Podcast. Welcome, welcome, you and I, to another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast, where we talk about Latino everything. Welcome. I hope you're enjoying the content. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Hit us up. Hit the smash the like button notification. Make sure you know when the next episode is, because you are going to want to check and stay tuned for the next episode that we have, because we have... A independent artist, Latina artist, she has 11 singles under her belt, including international tracks. She's also performed in different shows here locally in the Dallas Forward area. She's very creative, artistic, very much, and a lot more. We have a Texas wildflower, Crystal Skies in the house. Que paso? Que paso? Hola, thank you for having me. You're welcome. How are you doing today? Good. Awesome. Good. Appreciate you taking the time to come and see us. Uh, I know you've been busy with a lot of other podcasts, but uh, <laughs> I hit you up a long time ago. I'm you did. <laughs> but uh, no, I appreciate it very much. I stay scheduled ahead of time. And Thank I had uh, also, I seen you doing your thing. And uh, we'll get into all that. But okay. let's first start with a segment that I like to call Preguntas al Chile. Subscribe Preguntas al Chile. Carlos put together. Preguntas del Chile. You ready? Yes. Are you sure? No. Everybody says that. <laughs> Tacos o tortas? Tacos. Mm. Corn tortilla or flour tortilla? Corn. Gorditas o sopes? Gorditas. Jarrito o fanta? Jarrito. O a flavor? Tamarindo. <laughs> Agua de horchata, jamaica, tamarindo? Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah, I think jamaica. Yeah. Did you know it? It's, it's in English is hibiscus, uh -huh. and I didn't know that for a long hibiscus time. Hibiscus flowers. Yeah. Anytime they say hibiscus, <laughs> I thought it was some exotic stuff. It turns out it was agua de Jamaica. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Salsa verde or salsa roja? Do you like picante? Verde and sí. Yes, I like yeah. picante. Yeah. Team salsa verde all day right here. Mm -hmm. Menudo o pozole? Pozole all the way. Okay. Churros or flan? Churros. Valentina, tapatio, cholula or Tabasco sauce? Cholula. Cholula. Okay. What dish would you recommend to anyone from South Padre? Uh, fried shrimp and fish. Fried shrimp and fish. So if you're around that area, then uh, she's actually from over there. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about that too. But you go get that, okay? Yes. Okay. Conchitas. The uh, Actually, let's go with the paletas. Chile, corn, or the sandia or mango. The little paletitas de dulce. Oh, sandia. Sandia. Yeah. Y las conchitas de cornbread, I'm sorry, the cornbreads. Why do I keep confusing that? Los pancitos, <laughs> concha, uh, the brown ones, the white ones, or the pink ones? Um, Man, any color, really. Any color, conchitas just go. Yeah. Okay. And uh, when you hear the word Latino or Latina or Latinx, what first pops into mind? Uh, definitely culture. Culture, history, and... Uh, strength. Love it. Love it. Yep. Okay. And do you mind if anybody calls you Latina? Do you prefer to be called Mexican American, American? What do you care? Do you get offended? If no, I don't mind. Absolutely not. I'm actually proud to be called a Latina. Awesome. Yeah. This was uh, an addition to because <laughs> Carlos and I love a conspiracy theory and I have posted this on Facebook, but I like it myself. Mm -hmm. What is a conspiracy theory that you almost guarantee that is true? Are you into conspiracy theories at all? Um, like the moon landing, the aliens, anything? I mean, I definitely think, yeah, the UFOs probably at some point <laughs> maybe landed. I think so too. Yeah. I think people hide from stuff. I think Anyways, that would be one. That was just e e extra strange. We don't want to make you seem <laughs> strange. But I thought it was pretty interesting because everybody has to take on some of the things. But you might not be into conspiracies. I do. I enjoy entertaining one and see if, like, mm, could yeah. it be true? Play, like, you look great, by the way. Thank you. Uh, artist all the Thank way you. through. Thank I'm kind of like not too disappointed, but you didn't bring the uh, the pants that you colored in. I didn't. Maybe we were new. expecting the logo painted in there. I know. I didn't have time. But, uh, but yeah. But you look amazing, though. Thank you. The, so the, do gla you. the shades that you say you're very proud, you get a lot of compliments. Oh, they're Thank really you. nice, really Thank popping. You. And you did bring a suit, too. 
Yes. Kind of. So we're matching kinda. a little bit. Yeah, just a little blazer. <laughs> yeah, and and the gloves and everything. Oh, superstar yeah. in the house for Thank sure. You. you look okay. great. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Okay, here we go. So you grew up in the Rio Grande Valley, the RGB, especially in South Padre uh, Island. Correct. However, you moved to Austin and then moved to Dallas. What brought you to the Dallas area, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, well, family and work. Definitely. Family and work. Mm -hmm. And then as far as like the Dallas, once you got to Dallas, like what was how was the culture like? What did you like about it? Did you embrace it all the way immediately or you're kind of like still going on you? Well, it was definitely intimidating for me. Yeah. Why is uh, that? Well, I was just a first time mom when I moved here. Mm -hmm. You know, I had just had my little girl. So it was um, just a bigger city. You know, I you know, I came from Austin, so because I transitioned from the Valley to Austin for right, a while. Right, And um, Austin was just a little smaller and a little bit more laid back, you know. Mm -hmm. I felt like the people were just a little bit different. So I was a little intimidated when I got here. But, you know, eventually, you know, I started to learn my way around and kind of mm -hmm. I started to explore the city. And, you know, I kind of just grew grew to really love Dallas. Yeah, Dallas is awesome. Austin is weird. <clears throat> it is. Shout out to my Austin people, <laughs> but yeah, kind of strange. Everybody knows that. Yeah. We're not telling. I'm not telling you nothing new. Okay, so no. your father used to own a restaurant and a club. Oh, I don't know if the restaurant and the club were for, it was for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. Did you, uh, what was the name of the restaurant that he used to, an Italian restaurant, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, seafood, seafood restaurant. A seafood restaurant. Right, out okay. on uh, South Padre and Port Isabel, Marchand's. Okay, I'm sorry, it was French, more like base, but it was still seafood, right? Mm -hmm. or, seafood, Okay, yes. awesome. And then the club, was it within the restaurant or was it something separate? The club, I have no, I really don't even know yeah. much information. It's, that was after your time? It would, definitely was. So it was just kind of mentioned to me in like historical, you know, yeah. stories <laughs> given down from, you know, family. But um, I never went to the club. I was never taken there at that yeah. point, but... Um, the restaurant I do remember. Do you uh, remind me again the name of it? What was it? Marchands. Marchands. And do you used to work at the restaurant? No, or you used to go no. over there. And... I never worked there, but uh -huh. I uh, just remember kind of like running around as a baby. Really? You know, in the restaurant. So you, you must know, have so... been a little bitty when it was still open and yeah. operating. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. And uh, what what is the most the the most thing that stands out to you as far as being at the restaurant besides running around anything in particular um you know just um being around a lot of cooking mm -hmm. i would say i got to see like you know just i don't remember much <clears throat> and i just kind of look through photographs mm -hmm. you know um but just being around seafood and eating a lot of it i remember fried shrimp was like my favorite yeah <laughs> yeah to this day, still the same. To still to this day. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the uh, did it influence you at all? I don't know if you cook or not, but did it influence you to kind of sort of like in the kitchen a little bit or not? I really? love to cook when really? I do. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so the uh, in twenty twenty, you began taking your career uh, as far as your music career more seriously. What exactly, besides the pandemic, of course, everybody was, I still trips me out that we were locked up for almost a year. You know that? It's I know. still not sinking in. But I, besides the pandemic was being locked up, what other live event kind of sort of helped um, kind of sort of uh, help you push into get into that because you're not the only one there's a lot of people that were seeking different things right but what, what happened as far as you wanted to push and take this seriously and take it to to another level? Well, I mean, I, music was always a part of my life, kind mm -hmm. of growing up. I began to kind of just sing really early on. Uh, you know, from when I was a child, I began to try to get in front of my family and perform. Tell us the story about the uh, <laughs> paper towel and, or the Yeah, the... I, I used to use the carton of the napkin roll because mm -hmm. it projected my voice out of the little hole. Yeah. So, you know, when I... I know when I was like about three years old, I started to use that as a fake microphone. Yeah. Um, you know, and getting <clears throat> any opportunity I could to perform with like mariachis, you know, because we always had like fiestas going on and my parents always had music. Right. Um, that was important 
in our culture and my upbringing. So then I was in choir for a long time. So that really helped me build a lot of the knowledge, you know, about mm -hmm. how to properly sing, how to use your core and, you know, how to do notes and just different things of that nature. Yeah. So it, it was always kind of just something that was instilled in my life. Um, but then, of course, you know, life happens. Of course. Um, you know, then motherhood becomes a focus mm -hmm. totally. And it still is. And it always is. However, um, there was a gap, you know, and then the pandemic hit. And at that point, um, there was kind of just no work for a mm -hmm. minute for like everyone, I yeah, think. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So that was kind of hard for me because I'm just the kind of person that like I always have to be working and moving and and um, for me, that was just a time that I picked up and began to write my mm -hmm. first track. Mm -hmm. And so basically kind of when the world stopped, it gave me the opportunity to like really work. Yeah. But there was no other significant event that pushed you to grab the pen and start writing that particular song? Because that song says a oh, little bit well, about Oh, well, yes, something. you know, yes, the pandemic and obviously a breakup, you know, mm -hmm. um, a breakup. <laughs> and being in love and all that so so yes. it's weird right like it's strange to having to go through a breakup or it's strange just to go through hard stuff in general right right but i'll i've been saying it lately more there's a lot of the things good things happen once those bad things happen like there's really for the most part something that happens really good right. which is like something stirred inside of you to want to and grab the pen and start expressing those feelings of of what was going on, right? And right. then and then make it into a song. Right. Which was the name of the song? La Vida de Mi Ex. La Vida de Mi Ex, which mm -hmm. is it's cool that you can as I was telling another artist I had before that you can take things that are happening, whether it will be a regular day or, or things like that, and then you can make those emotions and put them into a song and uh, into music and create a song. Right. And then it's pretty dope. So if I'm not it mistaken, is. a lot of the songs that you have are expressions of real life events that happens to you. Right. Not <laughs> just like, I'm going to just rhyme this with that. I'm just going to rhyme this with that, but add the fact that my life is, is those events that happen to me too. Right. So that's pretty cool that you do that. Yes. Okay, but Thank you. so breakup led into you. <laughs> uh, and that breakup actually led into a lot of things of you creating. It opened up a different thing in you because you did a lot of a lot of music that's related to that. We'll talk about it here in a second. Okay, so from singing like through the tube of the paper towel, <laughs> if you've done it, if you're a kid and you've done it before, I know I've done it before. At least make noises. Right. At least like, ooh, or whatever. <laughs> so from yeah. doing that as being a kid to actually uh, singing with mariachis and then singing with the choir to recording international tracks that, that have been all over the place. How does that feel for you? It definitely feels fulfilling. Yeah. It does. It, you know, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to do it. Yeah. Do, can you, you feel it's still real or surreal? Or do you feel like from 2020, it's only been two years ago. So all of a sudden, like you're being like at it. Right. Like, do you feel like it's real or not real or a dream? Sometimes I feel like it's a, like, like literally life feels like a movie sometimes to me. It is a movie. I feel like life is kind of like a documentary in a way, yeah. you know, all the events that we experience is like a documentary of our life. We were just yeah. kind of talking about that on the way over here. Actually. I so. think, um, you're right. But I think, you know, sometimes our memory only records moments, right? Like the moment of you, being at your dad's and running around, you remember as a memory, right? Memory, totally. Or the breakup as a memory, you might not feel that great, but it's like a memory, right? Right. Like so many years that we pass by on earth that we don't realize certain things, but all certain moments, like we can't, like, they're like so vivid to us in our mind that we're just like, oh, wow. I was, I was, it was just a moment, but I can remember it still. Yeah, because me, it like it impacted us in some way. Yeah. It yeah. did. It definitely did. Okay, so the uh, as far as like, so your family, all your family has been. Let me go back to this question. Tell me your name, your crystal skies. Where where did the <laughs> name originated? How did you come up with it? Uh, was there any 
thought behind it as far as your creation of the artist thing? Well, I mean, you know, I kind of, like I said before, I'm going to get the tattoo here on my shoulder of the sun and moon. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like connected to the sky in some way. I love the moon. I'm always kind of following like the lunar calendar and things like that. Mm. So that's kind of where the name idea came from, Crystal Skies. And of course, you want to kind of have something that just is unique at the same time. So. Okay, so you felt some kind of connection with the moon, with, with the, the sky itself. Was is it the crystal part something related to the <laughs> government name or not necessarily you just like the name? Crystal, like my name? Uh-huh. Well, my real name is Your real name is Yeah, my legal real name is And then the sky, you just felt some attachment to it. Do you remember the moment where you said, ah, uh, sky, that's got to be it? I don't. You don't? No. Well, was you the only one that came up with the name uh -huh, or was somebody yes. else? No, just me. I came and, up with the name. But you, you know, it was to... just one of those random, uh -huh. okay, well, you know, this kind of, to me, sounds catchy because I'm all about, like, catchy things. And yeah. as you know in my songs, yeah. you know, they're kind of catchy. So I thought it's unique and <clears throat> I haven't heard it before. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> Since you're tied to the, since you love the sky so much, would you ever bungee jump? Or not, uh, skydive, skydive? Would I ever? Uh -huh. I mean, I have kind of done something similar to that. Um, Don't tell me the one where you go and just, they throw you in the tube. No, not that. No, right? you kind of like swing off of a high, high point. Yeah. So it's kind of like bungee jumping, but you're just like at an angle. I see what you're talking about. The big old, those big like old swing. Big, I mean, yeah. that one's cool, but <laughs> skydiving, sky, skydiving. Maybe I would. That'd Why be not? That would pretty cool. I'm going to do it. Are you? I was I wasn't thinking of doing it anymore, but all of a sudden I'm like, I mean, I wanna I don't wanna say YOLO because you know it is YOLO. Like, <laughs> where are those people at now? Well, yeah, they found out it's only one time for real. But <laughs> I've been having a feeling of getting it, uh, like doing that more right. for me. Why but, not? I mean, I say go for it. Yeah. Will you do it? Yeah. If you do it. <laughs> okay. We're going to pinky promise after the podcast. Okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for sure. Okay. So your mom was actually, uh, not only you're like, is there anybody else that does any kind of art? Because I know for sure your mom did a little bit of, in the entertainment business, uh, a little bit acting. Mm -hmm. But was there anybody else in your entire family that you know that does a little bit of something? No, other than just, you know, my parents being really eccentric and my mom doing mm -hmm. a little acting and. That's really about it. Okay, tell me the tell me what your mom did because I know you were telling me a little bit about the acting she did. Can you uh, share with us what it is that she did before? Uh, yeah, she did a uh, Mexican acting with the luchadores. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I was telling you. I was telling you was a messaging like them them dudes on the with the mascaras and everything. <laughs> they were like superheroes to me. I know. They were badass. They were like the Mexican. Batman. They were, they, you yeah. know, they put the mascaras, they go and fight the vampires or whatever. And we were like, we had the little figures too. So we were like, that is freaking. So whenever you told me that, I was like, that is dope. Yeah. That is so dope. Did you know how many movies she did? Was she just, um, maybe did a cameo in a few movies? Did, you, did she ever share with you that? She didn't go into much detail. She's yeah. kind of kept a lot of her life in a vault. But um. why do you feel that she didn't want to <laughs> share with you? Or she wildflower like you or no tanto oh absolutely yeah. i mean only because i've kind of seen through photos you know like i said just very eccentric people really yeah and what when are you when you say eccentric what exactly are you meaning can you the word to me is just kind of i don't get it yet i guess mm -hmm. but can you kind of elaborate uh, a little bit more definitely on just more of a carefree childhood you mm. know a lot like i said a lot of music around a lot of culture a lot of definitely family gatherings so family oriented gotcha um, you know, they traveled like a lot to Spain and Italy and things of that nature. But like, oh. I wasn't a, I don't think I was around at that point yet. So really, yeah. So so before I think I was like conceived in Spain. You know, when they were like traveling. So. Really? Mm hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. How does it make you feel that you know that it could have been possibly in Spain? It I, it's just like typical. Because I felt like I was conceived around. Because my, my birthday is November 19th. Mm -hmm. So if you do the math, it falls around Valentine's. Your, your birthday is November 19th? That's my mom's birthday. 
that's happy birthday to her whenever 19 get here. Yeah, man, but y'all are hardcore Scorpios then. They say that, but I think we're not too borderline. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I'm not into horoscopes a lot. Uh, I hear what it says. Maybe. Very strong sign. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yes. No, that for sure. Like Very in powerful, the gym. yes. See this right here? That's not because of the gym. That's a scorpion. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the... Uh, so November... Uh, so uh, I lost the train of thought. But anyways, <laughs> moving on. So the uh, luchador, that's freaking amazing. Yeah. But as I was saying, I'm sorry, I thought came back. So I was born November 19, but if you do the math, it was around February-ish time when mm-hmm. I maybe might have been conceived. Oh, I, was, like I would say Valentine's. Mm. So I'm a love child. That's all I said. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You. So your entire family's been f- is from Texas, right? Actually, you are a mix. You're Mexican and French, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. So right. your dad was actually born in France, right? Or he has family here. Born. So born your there. your dad, and then yeah. she met your mom, and your mom is Mexican. Correct. Okay, but your family's been in South Padre the most of their lives, right? So they're right. not like. The Mexicans that you would say were born in Mexico, right? Right. Correct. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, Well, they just might. I guess they migrated. I mean, I don't know much of Mm -hmm. the the history going back that far. But, you know, I do know that the Rio Grande Valley, you know, is just where where we grew up. That's yeah. For for your knowledge, as far as you can go back, y'all always been there. Yeah. So even though you. Do you consider yourself, I don't know if you consider yourself Mexican or, or more American or anything, but... Mexican-American. Mexican-American, absolutely. but you've been, as far as to your earlier knowledge and your families, y'all always been there. Right. And it's funny because your gra- great-grandfather, Jose Nicolás Bahí, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Padre Bahí, was the original grantee of the Texas Coastal Island, later named Padre Island, in his honor. Right. <laughs> that is freaking wild. Did I know. you know this when you was growing up? Not not um, right away, but I learned, you know, as I got older, I kind of learned about it through mm. the whole lawsuit because it became a an active part of my life. I kind of went to some of the, the hearings when the trial was going on. And so I learned about the history then and it was definitely interesting. Not to get too much into the history, but can you tell us what happened? So your family was involved. So the island is named after your grandfather. Correct. A great grandfather. That's right. like absolutely is documented. It's on yes. you can look it up. Right. But what happened was, if I'm not mistaken, what I was gathering from the story is that what well, people came in and bought or started buying some of the things that deeds were turned over from some of your ancestors or some of your I don't know if they're still somebody that you knew. But they never got paid for selling those parts, uh, and those are the heirs. After your grandfather had already, you know, passed away, and and passed the land over to his uh, his kids, and then later on they had to sue because there were mineral rights included, and there were uh, money that was owed, and then they never got paid for. Do you remember exactly what happened at that time? What to your best recollection? Recollection. Well, from what I understand mm-hmm. and what I've kind of heard is just that um, there was a, a major language barrier back in mm. that time. And that's why a lot of the documents went astray the way they did. Because, you know, Mexicans didn't know English back then. Yeah. And so the buyers, like from New York, they somehow got a hold of the deeds. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a there's a there's a good happy ending. The uh, there's a lady I don't know if you know who she is. I don't know if she, she must be related to you. She actually found the deeds, right? And later on, they were able to get compensated for the the uh, the uh, money that they were owed, right? Like many years ago, right? That's kind of crazy. Yeah. How did it make you feel when you first started learning about it? I don't know if you were still like too young to know. But later as a grown up, do you feel make you feel any type of way? I mean, you know, it's like a bittersweet story, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and it just when I see the statue there, you know, it just reminds me of kind of like where we're from and and just the whole everything that happened, you know. So yeah, it just it makes me feel proud to be from where I'm from. 
So what what area exactly is the statue? The a statue, by the way, is of her great grandfather. It's on uh, South Padre Island. So where what on what area is it at? It's uh, right as you cross the bridge. Uh -huh. So as you cross the bridge, you'll see like the South Padre sign. And you'll see the statue there. And that's your great grandfather. Correct. That's freaking <laughs> crazy to me. I don't know I, that you feel like it's just normal for you, but to me, I think it's super dope because I never met somebody that a city or a whole island was named after, or at least their great grandfather is. Right. So it's yeah. Cool. No, it is cool. I've taken photos out there. Like. Yeah. Yeah, I need to go back and visit. imagine a video over there. That would be cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you you are a, a huge advocate against bullying and suicide prevention. What does yes. that come from as far as for you to be or care for that at all? I know it's <coughs> on the obvious, right? But right. sometimes it hits us different as far as the reason why we uh, want to be advocates or, or you know, talk about that. Why is that for you? I just have had, you know, family experiences mm -hmm. in that respect with suicide. And, um, you know, just being an advocate for that is important to me. Just letting people know that. There's always somebody to talk to and uh, being able to just spread the awareness. Okay. I, <laughs> I'm very sorry for your loss, but I, I appreciate you sharing that. Thank and you. And it is very important. I, I'm weird sometimes. I look this <laughs> stuff up and yeah. I have Google the reason why people do it. And right. I don't seem to be have an answer, but I think first is a lot of combination of stuff, but it's just, it's always good to just keep letting people know that there's, there's still hope. Yeah. And that, that it's not the end and there is help out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, okay, let's get to, to the music part. I know okay. we get into some serious things, but I thought it was pretty <laughs> super interesting to talk about no, of the course. fact of your great grandfather has a statue and an island after yeah. him. Thank so, you. 11 singles. Yeah. So, you have La Vida de, uh, de Mi Ex, which is the first one that got everything started. Correct. Terminó uh, Navi Trap. Un poquito más, quédate la noche, dile, no quiero nada, escápate, amor irregular, cupido, y un beso. Yes. So far. Mm -hmm. And they're all singles. <clears throat> yes. Dang. And that's in the span of two years, too. Co yes, correct. Where do you get all this inspiration from besides just regular events? Or how do you maintain staying busy and doing, like... That's quite a bit of singles, to be honest. Right. Which is good. Yeah. Because this world that we live on, where it's TikTok, where it's se seven seconds, 15 seconds, and it's over. Right. It's super important to stay consistent. Absolutely. Where do you find the time? <clears throat> or how do you do it? I mean, it's definitely important, like you say, to stay inspired, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and again, through life events, you know, making sure, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that I'm documenting you know, how I'm feeling at the time, mm -hmm. I guess I would say. So, and, and that, so what is your process for you as far as making a song? Do you find the beat? Do your producer send you the beat or a package of beats? And then you kind of go through them and find the one that you kind of goes with some of the things that you were going through? How does that, how does your process? Um, it could be different sometimes. Like sometimes I'll start off with a beat mm -hmm. and, you know, if I get an idea, I'll write it down and then it'll just kind of like start to grow. Mm -hmm. And then other times um, it'll start with the song and the lyrics first. And a lot of the times it'll start with like a hook for me. Yeah. So, you know, either like the coro or the hook, you know, yeah. the catchy part, like I was kind of saying earlier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, hustle and flow. The <laughs> hook is like the most important part that you can yeah. have on a song. That's what's going to keep the people, like, checking the rest of your track. That's, that's kind of like, yeah, like the hook. Mm -hmm. That's gonna, what's going to hook them. Yeah. So. And uh, where is it? So it's crazy to me that you have 11 singles because your people that you work with as far as the, the music, the producer, they're all over the place, right? So can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Well, we're, they're kind of just international, mm -hmm. so we, they work remotely. I work with a producer out of Peru, Eric O.C., mm -hmm. so he's done a lot of my tracks. And then, of course, there's Tower Beats, who's also out of Peru. And then there are local, you know, studios that I have worked with okay. here in the Dallas area as well. What is somebody, I think you've been in the Valley of the Kings before, right? Is, or no? In, in Dallas? 
Oh, what uh, studios have you recorded here? Uh, B Melodic uh-huh. and El Musico on Jefferson. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So you look, stayed in that area as far as recording was. So they just pretty much just record your vocals and everything, and then just you send them over to the session to the producers Correct. and then do their magic? Correct. Or, like, if there's a special situation, mm-hmm. um, they'll do you know, the track, like Be Melodic did Escapate, for instance. So Mm -hmm. I recorded here locally, and he also produced the track. So in that case. Oh, nice. That's wild. And uh, not only have you done those tracks so far, so let me ask you this, though. I'm going (laughs) to tell you my favorite. Which one? For me, Cupido was hitting so hard today. It's not even funny. It's a great song. It It is is a great song because it says that you... Yo tengo todo lo quiero. And then Mas, like, I don't know why it hit so hard for me. I just liked it. And I was jamming. Like, it kind of makes you think. It makes you think. It makes you be grateful. Yeah. It makes you be grateful that you have everything, todo lo que tienes y más. Like, you don't, not only do you have everything you need, but you have extra you know, on top of what you already need. Right. And I think it's pretty dope that sometimes we don't, we don't feel like we don't take the opportunity to be grateful for everything that we have. We always want to shoot for more. And right. I think I think a lot of the times we got to super appreciative for the fact that other people have to go find water, have oh, yeah. to go get food. Yep. And we just like literally walk into a grocery store mm-hmm. and it's ours. Yep. It's so, so true. That's my, that was my favorite track so far. I uh, see Amor Irregular, how it would be <laughs> your favorite track. But right. why is that one? I, I know why it's your favorite one. Amor Irregular. Right. So it was because of the breakup and it was because of the same uh, Salvadoreño, if I'm not mistaken, that is the reason why. Mm-hmm. Is that why it's so heartfelt for you, his heart, his home, and that, that the reason why you wanted to spend a little bit more time on getting the video out for that one? Because I wrote it with, like, so much love, mm-hmm. you know, and when you put that kind of energy mm-hmm into something that you can create, manifest, and then, like, share, you know, like, throw out to the world, Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it's definitely more important, and it hits a different spot, I would say. For you, that song, is it more of, like, therapy and getting the emotions out, or do you just want to, I don't know if you're cool with that person or not, I think. Yeah, are not together anymore or whatever. But <laughs> is it more of a, you just wanted to make it full, so special because of the moment that you have together? Yeah. 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 And, you know, like I've said before, you know, when God kind of puts people in your path mm-hmm. for whatever reason and you connect and you just kind of let that flow, you know? Yeah. I mean, you I know exactly why that song is your favorite. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I know. And the video actually drops today. It does, yes. So we're recording this on, uh, what is that, January the 20th today? Correct. So it drops yep. today. Uh, if We're going to insert a little clip of it, so I'm going to remind Carlos to let me know. So what time does it drop today? Uh, ho- hopefully tonight, like before 7 okay. is the plan. Yes. So, so I'll so keep everybody drop today. posted. You know, things happen, but once it drops... Then, uh, if yes. you don't mind, we'd like to share a little video. Yes, absolutely. Of uh, Amor Irregular. Okay. Which uh, you use, uh, there were some sponsors that you had working on that video. Can you tell us a little bit about the sponsors? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Jesse, Jesse's Performance uh-huh. sponsored the vehicle that's in the video. A Trans Sam. Beautiful yes. with a gold pin. Uh, man, it's a beautiful car. Super cool car, yeah. man. Super cool car and super cool people. Yeah. Um, if you haven't already checked, out their shop you know they do a lot of work on you know all kinds of awesome cars and echo latino radio also did sponsor on that for location very quickly we just want to jump in to let you know thank you very much for checking out this episode of the global latin factor podcast make sure you subscribe hit the bell and back to the episode echo thank latino, you to what them. Do they do? Uh, their radio station. Their radio yes. station mm-hmm. in the Dallas area. Correct, okay. Echo Latino. I believe it's. I don't want to quote it, but ninety nine point six. But I may okay. be wrong. Okay. If you give it to me, we'll put it in the description. So yes. that way I usually include all the stuff. I'll confirm. And I'll, I include the uh, your channel and everything. Okay. So we'll make sure we add it in there. Yes. And what else? Who else? Along with them, Hilda Duarte, 
uh, one of the presidents of the LULAC Association. Mm -hmm. She's a big fan of the music. So she teamed up with Echo Latino and they kind of, you know, did the partnership on the sponsorship. So thank you to them. So do they usually, I know they're pretty important for you as far as sponsors, right? But a lot of artists don't really maybe know how to go about sponsoring. So you just introduce yourself. They saw the music, they liked it. Did you pitch something to them? What did they offer because of what you were doing and your story that they liked that they wanted to help? Kind of a little bit of both, really. Uh -huh. You know, sometimes you, it's about a pitch, you know. It's somebody that's not super familiar maybe with your music, but mm -hmm. kind of learning a little bit about you. And you kind of see some opportunity to help each other out. So gotcha. it's all about, like, networking the right opportunities, I would say. And for them, as far as within the video, what, of course, the the car is going to be one of them and the credits are going to give, give it to them but by LULAC and all the other ones what what actually do they get or they just did a financial contribution and also credits on the video credits both credits mm -hmm. on the video also financial contribution and you know just believing in the movement I guess believing in the music and being a supporter in that way yeah. also the reason I ask you is because there's a lot of independent artists in the Dallas Forward area, that it takes money. It takes quite it a does. bit of money to to make projects. Oh yeah. And a lot of them limit themselves to the fact that they don't have it, instead of finding a way. Uh, first of all, with whatever you have to create something. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that either, that you can always try to see if anybody was willing to sponsor. But you'll be surprised how many people are willing to be happy to be on a video with whatever they have, their product. Oh, absolutely. Like product placement. Absolutely. But I'm glad that you shared it with me because a lot of them sometimes might not, maybe it's a brain blockage that they don't realize that there's opportunities out there as long as you ask. Right, right? and there's a, like a lot of resources for yeah. them. So. I think a lot of, the, <clears throat> I think some of your sponsors see the consistency of the 11 singles, not to mention, like you're committed to this in a very short time. Usually for... Myself here on the podcast, I like to get people that have been doing it for a longer time. Right. Like, I know you're, we'll talk about it here shortly, but Mandy Red, right. Louis the Great, and all the other ones that I've done, have done it for a longer time, you know. They've right. been consistent with it. Uh, some of them, not so much, but still, they have a love for it, right? But within the two-year time frame, you actually have made quite a bit of an impact, even in the Dallas, because you're getting recognized in different places. Right. And some of the people, I know so because I know some of the people that you interact <laughs> with, and I know that your name is getting around within here. Right. So, and they, and then I see the sponsors believe in you. That's the reason why they do. So if you're right. an independent artist, you do really have to believe in yourself in order for them to believe in you. Absolutely. Because otherwise, Number one. Mm -hmm. otherwise they're just like going to be, you're just going to in one ear, not the other. Yeah, you have to believe in yourself. That's the number one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you mentioned before, uh, we'll talk about the projects you have coming up, but you have mentioned before that you were from the hood or <laughs> very hood-like. Was Is that how you, the area where you came, was that what it was? Did you go through some really tough times growing up as a teenager or whatever? Um, Like tough times, yeah. I mean, I think we all kind of go through our childhood, mm -hmm. you know, experiences, either good or bad. Um, but there obviously was a time in childhood where, like, my parents had split up. So, you know, then we moved and things changed. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I was always working really early on. So I always had, like, watched the work ethic of my dad, like, in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, like, those are the memories that I have you know, from being little, yeah. like just watching, like my parents always like, you know, work and hustle, like yeah. even in their own like atmosphere, like restaurant it was, but um, I worked always early on. So my work ethic, and I think that's what's giving me the opportunity, like to do so much in such a little amount of time, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, because I've just always had that hustle. Like I've got to be working, I've got to be moving forward and like just, you know, what's next kind of yeah, mentality. Definitely. Yeah. Like but there's just no time to waste, I guess. <laughs> well, my question was, are you, how hood are you? 
How hood am I? Um, was it really tough at the times where you were growing up? Not super tough, but, you know, I think moving around a lot was more of the challenge for me. Yeah. And uh, were you... Uh, and then, of course, like I mentioned, you know, always working, you know, to support myself. So... So you have to start hustling at early age yeah. uh, for yourself to get there. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah. The uh, Another thing that I know about you is, too, that you l look into a lot of the things that need to be done as far as an independent artist or the things that you need to be aware of, such as ASCAP, BMI, publishing, and things like that. I right. wasn't testing you when I messaged <laughs> you about BMI or ASCAP, but I, would just, oh, I know. but I just knew, like, how deep are you as far as knowing how much uh, how much research have you done as far as what this takes or what it takes to be an artist or what it takes to be an artist with a purpose as far as not just making a song just to make a song but how can we get it out to people and ha really make an impact you have quite a bit of spotify listeners i don't know if you checked them but i checked yes i have <laughs> and it's pretty cool to know that you do it with a purpose not just it's cute to do a song but it's not so cute if nobody listens to it. Right. And that's crazy that you know where to put it, how to get it, how to move, and things like that. Right. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. All right. You have all kinds of things uh, that are coming up. So you have Ride or Die. Right. Uh, the other one is Genie. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so tell me about Ride or Die. So that one is more of, like, catered to the lowrider community or the car scene community. Uh, is it more hip-hop? Yes. Okay. More bilingual. More bilingual, mm -hmm. more hip hop. Uh, and when is that one going to be coming out? And is it a single? Yes, it's a single. Mm -hmm. It's currently in production. Got you. It's currently pending maybe a couple of ad libs that I'm working on. Got you. So I do sometimes work out of like my own studio in my home. So I'm able to do small things like that. Like So you record your own stuff sometimes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I talk about A lot creative. of the times, actually. Really? Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, so you have an estimated time about when it's going to be coming out or not yet? It's in production right now. So hopefully within the next month, I'm hoping, I think so. you know, February, uh, latest March. I like your uh, covers that you come up with. Thank um, you. Like for Cupido, the dark, see with the dark, you do a lot of uh, change of hair. I but do. It looks pretty, uh, <laughs> it looks pretty good because it goes with the sound of it. Anybody would Thank expect you. Cupido to be like lovey dovey, but then when you hit the track, we're like, ooh. It's a little dark, it's yeah. A little dark. Definitely. But it goes with it. And the trap, the trap sound made remind me a little bit of the Bad Bunny from way back in the days type right. of sound. You know, with minus that uh stuff. <laughs> but it was pretty cool. And then all the other artwork that you have for your stuff. So who does your Thank artwork? You. I do. You do Most your artwork? Mm -hmm. Like you actually make it in you Which ones, like the covers? The covers, the covers. Uh, sometimes it'll be outsourced, gotcha. like certain ones. You mm -hmm. know, I'll uh, use a third party. Or, um, like, I've done some of my own covers, too. Like, do you have the software? I or? do, I have the software. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Canva. I use you Canva. You use Canva? Mm-hmm. Hey. You, <laughs> I'm telling you, you got to be resourceful yeah. as far as when you're coming up. You have yeah. to... Find a way, not not cut corners, but really find a way to make it work. Like, yeah, and I mean, like, we're creatives, you yeah. know? So, like, all that stuff is, like, um, it's fun. for It's part of the process, and yeah. it's just, if you're a creative, then you're cool with doing things like that for yourself. But I just feel you so meticulous as far as even know that the song, Cupido, like, I'm just giving an example because that one stands up to me more. Right. But know that the song sounds like that, and then give it the cover to make it go with it to back it up yeah, yeah. so yeah. i know it's meticulously done it i don't is, think it yeah. was an accident and it was like that is freaking dope that she did you. that <laughs> okay so we have that one pending coming soon is in the works right or die uh, like March, just hopefully. a couple things going on but in production mm -hmm. genie what is that one about yeah genie is just straight up about uh genie you know it's a song about um the sales about the genie um you know, it's a, like a little story. The video mm -hmm. that I have in mind is going to kind of be kind of like a little movie in the beginning. Yeah. Um, but it is more of trap comercial, so definitely more of a commercial trap beat. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the instrumentals on this track is actually by a Latin Grammy winning producer. So super excited. Who was that? Dino the Beatlionaire. Okay, and that's the one that you were taking your time with. you, Right, but it's fully written already, and now it just needs to be tracked and recorded. So yeah. I'm working on it. So you're working on that one, and that's uh, going to be something that, with a Grammy winner producer, I keep slipping Be- my hand The beat here. is great. I mean, I think people will really like it. Yeah. I think on the Cupido, the only thing that I wanted more on that one was a couple more ad libs on it, because I think... Of, uh, of the other ones that you're done, como uh, La Vida de Mi Ex, mm-hmm. it has those. I wanted to hear a couple of little more things. Oh, that thump. But other than more that, it was freaking dope. Good feedback, though. No, but I, I, I mean, I used to do, a, like, be in there, too. Yeah. And hearing all the stuff. And one of the persons that used to tell me, like, I think it was Danny Rumi, actually interviewed him. Was like, or somebody told me, I don't remember. It might have been him. That you put your track... Play your track on whatever setup you have. Right. One of the commercial tracks that they play. Now play your track. If it's not real close to or the same, then you need to work on it. Yeah. So that's the what I was always hear that part too. You know, and be that two X, I can hear the change. I can hear that. Migos are really good with the outlets as far as the way that they play and harmonize and stuff. And and it's always full. Like their stacks probably as far as what they record is like. Oh yeah, Stacked. I'm sure. <laughs> but it's pretty cool that that you know about those ad libs, and you were saying earlier about you need to record some ad libs. But I'm like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so Jeannie Pendin, enloqueciendo, enloqueciendo is another single. It is another single. It's already a you know um, tracked project, so in production as well. Also, también. So you're sticking with the same producers todavía. You already formulated like a group, the team that you talked about. Correct. I've stayed with the same crew that has been kind of running the show since day one. Got you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you also did a collab with MB Writer, and it's supposed to be maybe around April? Yes, that's a projected date for the Uh MB Writer Uh track. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how did that come about? They approached me with a really cool instrumental with uh, ZigZag from NB Writer. And you ran into them probably at the Fair Park one? Yeah, mm-hmm. I ran into them at the Fair Park show. I did the the Taurus Empire show there. Yeah. And, you know, we just decided it would be maybe an idea to kind of see if I would get inspired on the instrumental. And I did, and I ended up writing a really cool couple of, you know, like verses on it. Mm-hmm. And I laid my, I tracked my vocals and sent them over. And you just those. waiting for it to be ready. Yeah. That's pretty. It's cool. already done. You know, they're working on like cover art and stuff of that nature. So got you. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know you have mentioned on other interviews that you would like to collab with people here in the DFW because you're right. We do have a lot of talent. But the only thing that I don't like about n- now, even then when I was doing music, is the fact that there's a lot of talking and not a lot of doing. Right. Like, I love that, that y'all talking about doing collabs. I really do. I really hope that y'all do, especially yourself, Mandy Red, Christy Lux, um, Wavy Celine, which I think she's making a wave. I've, I've heard of her. I haven't seen her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's other other females. Female. That's just the females. The guys, right. there's like a couple of them, right? But right. still, it's pretty cool. But there's so much freaking talking usually that there's nothing gets done. And I think for me, at least in 2023, if you're just talking to me, I'm not going to listen to you unless you're talking about doing something now like, and get it done. Right. So besides the ones that you feel like are <laughs> going to be able to come to fruition, um, Mandy Red, you're working on something. Right. You already tar- started talking about it, kind of sort of laying the plan. Yes, we're kind of just in the beginning stages mm-hmm. of like a, pro- a potential project. So. Okay. I hope it gets done. And then what other collabs would you like to get done? Like locally, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, locally. Um, Just some of the artists that you mentioned already. You know, Mm -hmm. like I've seen a lot of Christy Lux work. I've seen Crystal Poppin. She's really, I love her music. Animes and G-Love out of Houston are really dope. Yeah, I got to interview them. They're super dope. They are dope. I love their their vibe. And they're just so like energetic and positive. So, Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of 
really cool talent in the DFW and yeah. just Texas area in general. Yeah, the only reason why I keep emphasizing, I don't think on every single person that comes here about <laughs> collab is because I don't know if it's true or not, but I've seen the TikTok, like everybody says TikTok, and I've seen the guy that was talking about, and I don't even know if the story is true, but it makes sense, right? So when the Reggaetoneros were fir- first coming up, mm-hmm. they used to do each other collabs on the song, like remixes all the time. Yeah. Like you have Amore Regular or whatever that might be, hey, I have a song right here, like uh, do the remix. Right. Do the remix. It wasn't even the video sometimes. It was just the audio. They did it. Mm-hmm. Same thing for the other guy. And they just kept that going for years. You all, ladies, right now are like, y'all can really run the market as far as in the DFW area. Right. It, y'all continue to do that for a few years. Before you know it, psh, there's, yeah, I have to go through y'all ladies in order for anybody to be anything within the DFW. Right. Because there will not be <laughs> nobody. Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense because what he was saying is that my, your track would introduce people to the other people's audience and they'll do the same thing. Like, exactly. You know, not take advantage of the other person, but like literally leverage on each other's uh, fan base back and forth until you yeah, grow into this thing that's like psh, the biggest thing ever. Yeah, cross networking yep. for sure. Yeah, so I, I don't, I'm not telling you what to do, <laughs> but I'm saying logically to me when I see that, like, hmm, it makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. But I see the fact of who's right now relevant within music in the right. DFW, and I see the possibilities of you being like again the biggest thing coming out f- for a long time. Thank you. I believe it's that. up to y'all. Okay, so you also have um, another collab you done before that are internationally, mm-hmm. correct? So yes. tell me about those. Well, I did the peace song out of India with the St. Francis Ministries. Mm -hmm. And that has over 250 tracks on the song and over 72 countries involved. So I was kind of chosen for to represent the U.S. Gotcha. Yeah. So that was really fun. I did a whole like video and studio for it. Sent them. So they'll use that footage for part of their video when they drop that project. Yeah, it was, so it's supposed <coughs> to drop in November sometime. It was. But it, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and, and then what happened? They just moving it still? Yeah, they have have so many moving parts yeah. to the project, so it got a little delayed, but it is something to look forward to. Yeah. And how, uh, how did that opportunity come about? How did they find you? Did you reach out to them? How did that go? They heard one of my songs, mm-hmm. and that's how they reached out. So they became a fan of the music first and then connected with me on that level. And I agreed to it because... You know, I just think it's important as an artist to kind of stay versatile mm-hmm. and, you know, not just stay stuck in just one kind of path, but kind of keep your options kind of open and experiment like music is universal. Yeah. So that's why I took it. And uh, that one's a peace uh, song, but it's in India. Yes, it's coming out of Goa, India. And is that what's what genre of song is it for that one? It's definitely, I, w- I would call it like peace music. It's mm-hmm. it's about like world peace straight up. It's about, you know, like ending racism and bringing everybody together. And it's just a really powerful song. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. Okay, so you also have No Quiero Nada and Pensando en Ti. Yes. With uh, Erica O.C.? Eric O.C. Eric, Eric O.C. Correct. Okay, and that's another one that you did collab on. He is from Peru. Peru. Yes. Okay, I seen something about uh, and Venezuela really originally, but gotcha. it's now based in Peru. I seen something about <coughs> uh, Italy. What was that one? That was Dile. Dile. Yes, that project was signed to a label out of Italy. Okay, so you're independent, independent, but you work with them to for that song for just for one project. Yes, Dile. for Dile. Mm-hmm. And something happened with a video. <laughs> You tell me the story behind that. Um, well, we, we lost some tracks and it just... For the video. Yes, for the video in the beginning. So we kind of had to go back and record <laughs> again. But, um, you know, it was just a, a fun challenge and definitely a lot of work. But Yeah. And, we, and they sponsored the video. So we were able to put their product in the video and kind of utilize that. So. Yeah, which was, which one was it? The Santero, the Dile wine. The Dile wine. Yeah, so they had a collection called 
Dile. And it just so happened that I wrote Dile when they were trying to launch their collection. So did you do the song first and then they found that song or did you? No, it was they didn't know I was writing Dile. They they contacted what? me because they like La Vida de Mi Ex. That's freaking wild. They, you totally. had a song Dile yes. and they have a the collection. They had the collection. I didn't know about it because mm -hmm. it's on the other side of the world. Yeah, we yeah. don't even sell it in the U.S. yet. So, yeah, they were like, well, what, you know, we love La Vida de Mi Ex. Like, what do you have working on next? And I was writing Dile at the time. See and how it's a movie? See how it's all a movie? It just, like, <laughs> it was like serendipity. Like, the stars <laughs> align for you sometimes when you're on the path, and it's freaking wild. Yeah, and they sent me the bottles of Dile, I see like, that. from Italy. I thought it was props, to be honest. No. I didn't realize that he actually was with the brand of the of the of whatever they were launching. Yeah, I gave them away. You know, it took a, a long time to get here because they came from overseas. Yeah. And there was, like, fees for them and all that. But they had, like, a hand imprint. So yeah. they were really cool. But, yeah. I it. thought it was, like, oh, look at her with the details, which I know you're into details. But I didn't realize, like, it wasn't a prop. It was, like, a... And it wasn't planned. That's like, freaking nuts. At all. Yeah. Blow my mind again. Yeah, mind-blowing, definitely. Okay, Renaissance uh, with uh, Sanon and Hassan Baba. Yes, they're out of Iran. Iran. Mm -hmm. That's the track you did with Iran. And how did that one come to be, too? Did they find you as well? They also, yes, became just lovers of, you know, my movement and the music. And they reached out with some really amazing instrumentals that yeah. I was pretty blown away by and I just I got inspired to write on it and and that actually that song is about the lunar eclipse the red one mm -hmm. that happened like on January 21st a couple of years ago don't they call it like the blood eclipse or something like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, so you wrote I read that. about that eclipse in that song yeah yeah I don't think I heard that song was it in English in English or Spanish just my part is in Spanish in Spanish and the rest is in their language. Their language. Correct. That's crazy. How do you feel that they just find you, reach out, and you look them up? Because I'm pretty sure you do your homework. Yeah. And they seem legitimate, and then they want to work with you. I mean, you know, sometimes it's a risky business, you know? You're just not sure. Yeah. But you really, like I said before, it's got there's got to be, like, a connection. you got to feel good about it. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, quality, too. Like, I I have to like it. Yeah. You know, I have to like it for me. Yeah. So that's important. That's crazy. And then you have, so Iran, uh, Peru, um, Italy, and then what else? What other places? Um, well, Venezuela, as I mentioned before. and Yeah, Venezuela. And just locally, I would say. Okay. So La Vida de Mi Ex, uh, that one was in 2020. You filmed it during the pandemic, but you had all kinds of stuff going on for that one, right? You had <laughs> Airbnbs, you did yeah. different shootings. Can you tell me about that one? First yeah. of all, it was your first song, uh, first video ever, music video, mm -hmm. right? Right. And then, so how did you start learning about what to do, how to storyboard and everything? And I did storyboard, like I sketched everything mm -hmm. out before mm -hmm. we got there. So my team kind of had like a plan of what scenes went where because, you know, they another language barrier, they didn't understand the lyrics, you know, they didn't know the Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really had to help in that respect. But <clears throat> it was definitely an experience. We filmed in Highland Park for, you know, the most part of the video, like yeah. the outdoor scenes. And then, yes, we did the Airbnb. So, so who, who filmed that one? That was a local producer. I won't name them at the moment, but um, local producer from Dallas. That's cool. That's freaking cool that you were able to do that. And uh, so uh, besides the obvious inspirations for you growing up in the in the valley or the valley in <laughs> Texas, not the valley yes. in California, the uh, Selena, of course. Uh, okay. What other inspirations do you have of music that you like to hear? That you enjoy for yourself uh, what are, what are they I mean I'm definitely immersed in the Latin uh, urban genre mm -hmm. uh, reggaeton I listen to like daily you know so we're Alex Rose Mickey Woods you know bad yeah. Bunny. Um, so I'm just very immersed in in the music what is the what will be your dream collab 
of course, I'm pretty sure right now, Bad Bunny. But throughout history of all the music, who will be your dream collab for you? Throughout, like, history, history? Mm -hmm. uh, dream collab. Wow, that's, like, a big one. I feel like it would have to be somebody that's just not here anymore, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I would say, like, maybe Mike Towers would be one. Yeah. You like him a lot? What is it you like about his? I like him. He's cool. I what like, is it? I love that his music are like stories, you know, kind of like mine. I feel, you know, that we connect in that way. Okay. So I'm not sure if he's writing like his lyrics out of experiences like I am, but mm -hmm. yeah. if you listen to his lyrics, like a lot of his, his songs are kind of like, you know, stories in the song. Yeah, yeah, it's funny business when he gets to the bigger <laughs> artists, but it, some yeah. of them are, some are very art artistic and they are able to. So it'd be pretty cool if he did, and then I can link up for for a uh, a track. Yeah, and I love his voice. Yeah, so not only uh, Selena, but you had Shakira, Christina Aguilera, Ricky Martin, Snoop Dogg, Beyonce, Bob Marley. Why? Why did you like uh, regga reggae? Like regular reggae? What? What was it? the uh, liking of it yeah you know, i just grew up with it i think mm -hmm. i heard it a lot like in the household bob marley especially um you know and like i said i grew up on the island so yeah i feel like it was maybe just kind of that whole island vibe of of what i remember growing up i think you will have to if you're in the beach you will have to listen <laughs> to some kind of reggae to be within the vibe at least once the time during the time that you're there right yeah because yeah, you're right. I mean, there's nothing like it. It's just a whole vibe, you know, it is. literally. <laughs> it is a whole vibe. Okay, so uh, have have you talked about doing, has anybody approached you to doing any kind of movies or anything like that? Not yet. Not yet? No. Are you wanting to experiment in that area? Are you wanting to, if the opportunity presents itself, to do something? I haven't thought about it, mm -hmm. but now that you mentioned it and we kind of dug a little bit into my mom's past, it wouldn't surprise me, you know, mm. that it may be something that I would dabble in at some point. Yeah. So what would, would you say as far as your music and the reason why you do music now, what's the purpose of it? What's, what does the, what, uh, what are you trying to accomplish whenever you're creating music? Because some of your lyrics vary. Some of them are, you know, very... Not too sexual or whatever, but it does mention a little bit of the stuff like that. And some of them are very different type of vibes. So what would you say as far as your purpose for making music now is? Uh, definitely, you know, I think uh, music is a form of art. And mm -hmm. I think art is important in our lives. Yeah. I think it's important um, as a part of growth and kind of just learning who we are as individuals. And, you know, embracing uh, self-expression. So that's what I would. The uh, for you as far as like creating, and do you think you always had it in you, or because of the heartbreak, it kind of like really, really amplified that? I think I always had it in me, and I think we all mm -hmm. always have whatever it is that we're searching for right. in us. It just things happen in our lives that maybe sometimes kind of wake up whatever it is that's in us, but we always had it in us all, all along, if that makes sense. No, it does. I think we do. And I think whether it would be like a life-changing event, like a wreck or anything, certain things do drive certain emotions to trigger something that we had dormant in us to push it out. Right. And, and, go and do something and right. instead of just living like I don't want to say normal because still living is life right but there's other things that you can experiment within being here even though it's a short time that uh, it can push you to do different things instead of what everybody would consider normal right you know yep. so that's pretty cool all right and uh, as far as um, so any other collabs that you have of course we talked about the Mandy Rappers any other one pending that you have you are working on that can't really talk about but or is there other ones that i missed so far 
currently know just uh, today's video, you know, uh, tune into that. And of course, as I mentioned before, Pensando en Ti recently dropped. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the newest collab that everybody can check out. And it's more of a love song. It's a little bit more R Latin, like Latin R&B. Yeah. So less reggaeton vibe. Um, but again, it's like perf cut just perfect in time for like Valentine's Day. So mm. let's talk about that. The, the, the reason. So you've been doing a lot more. You, we can say it's Spanglish type of music, mm -hmm. like English and Spanish. Right. And I think so. I MC weddings and quinceañeras and stuff like that. I used to MC clubs, right? Um, but now I do more of that. And a lot of the demand for me is because um, they ask for English and Spanish, right? Like, can you do in English and Spanish? And I'm I'm good at doing that. And I think songs like Telepatia mm -hmm. is one of my one of my favorite jams because it, it switches. And it's so crazy that we don't even pay attention that you're jamming in English one moment and then all of a sudden you're singing in Spanish or the other way around. Right. But you, because we're so fluent with the language, English and Spanish, that we don't realize how quick that switches mm -hmm. and it happens. Yeah. So is that what you saw as far as the need to want to do something? Or do you feel like uh, sharing our, your culture with the world, that is, it is essential for you to do it in both? Definitely sharing the culture with the world. Mm -hmm. It's essential to provide, you know, both options, English and Spanish. Like, give the listener, you know, the full experience. Gotcha. Yeah. Why do you think it's important to keep pushing our culture over to expose it to different people, especially yourself, all over to Iran and Italy and different places? Because our culture is music. You know, music comes from our, from our, our culture. Yeah. So we, you know, we have to be proud of it and uh, share that as much as we can with the world and just, you know, spread it like fire. Awesome. I appreciate yeah. that. I love that very much. Yeah. Okay, so we're running short on time, but tell me all of your social media one more time. Uh, where can they find you at? Crystalskies.com uh, for any just new updates, new collabs, you know, keeping uh, up with the news. And Instagram, Crystal Skies, K-R-I-S-T-A-L-S-K-I-E-S. -S -S. Okay. And uh, once again, coming soon, we have the, uh, we have Ride or Die. Yes. We have Genie. We have yes. Enloqueciendo and the MB Rider collabo that's yes. dropping soon. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, what is an advice? It's crazy to me that I'm asking you for it, right? Because you've just been doing it for a shorter time. <laughs> I know. For the artists in the local scene, the DFW local scene, I call them independent artists. I like that term better for me. But what would you advice be to them? Because I'm not saying you like an example, but the work ethic, and I'm again, I understand it's more deeper than that because of the way you were made. Right. But what will be something that you can advise to them as far as being consistent with it or even finding some way to still keep it rolling and keep it moving as far as the music? You know, definitely, number one, like we said before, believing in yourself, you know. I have it here on my jacket, never give up. Never give up. Never give up, you know, believe in yourself and stay consistent, you know, uh, make yourself to-do lists, like stay um, strict with yourself and get yourself on a routine and and realize that this is a business just like any other and you know stay passionate while you're doing it don't lose the passion don't get lost in the business and keep the passion there but you know it's a balance but anyone can do it if you put your mind to it and you just believe in yourself I just had a clip that I was going to be posting later on about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel funny about how people idolize celebrities. Right. Which, again, teach their own. But I feel like if you was to put the effort to it, did you know that you could be that if you wanted to? Right. Like, you can do it, too. Absolutely. But you choose not to. But just know that within you, you have it to do it if you yes. desire to do so. Yes. You had it in you all along. Yeah. So. Okay. And uh, merch, besides the projects... Um, any videos that you have that you're going to be moving on to next after the one you drop, Amor Regular? Yes, I want to do something for both Genie and Ride or Die. Yeah. So I'll I'm going to throw my hat in there, like the cancel show, and say if you need <laughs> an actor. I might, I might not have been on an international uh, Latino TV show, 
if y'all find me, y'all can post it. If not, then <laughs> and I hey. might have made a cameo in a couple of videos. Cameo for ride or die, though, for sure, because, you know, that's going to be more, like I said, car club scene. So I got <clears throat> to see who's over there because <clears throat> I might not be able to be welcome. But I want I'm a group just thing. No. <laughs> let me know who's over there and then I'll let you know if I can't. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> I show up anywhere. To be honest, I don't go up much anywhere, any place, because I really usually just focus on this. Right. Or focus on doing whatever gig I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But I, I can I can show up. All right. I'll wear make my shirt. some time for it. And uh any uh merchandise for you. So I, I know that you make some of the jeans you, you created. I know that you have you style yourself for your videos. Right. So first about the look on all your videos is wild. How some scenes you're wearing a purple uh, wig <laughs> or look and then with the uh, outfit. I don't know. I, I don't know about all that stuff. It's That's y'all ladies. <laughs> but I know that it switches a lot and you yeah. change it and you do a lot of the styling yourself. Correct? I do. Yeah. That's freaking crazy. Yes. Was there. Do you have any experience as far as that? Or of course, being a, a woman and knowing how to dress like a woman but is there anything that you look up uh like experience mm -hmm. in styling and mm -hmm. stuff i mean yeah. throughout college i worked a lot of retail jobs so i i would definitely say you know just being like in the industry mm -hmm. um in that respect but a lot of it like i've said before it's just a form of like self self-expression and in, in the creative form gotcha so, so you went to college mm -hmm. did you graduate i mean i didn't but did you I do. I have, you have a degree. A degree? Mm -hmm. What is it in? If you don't I, mind I only have an associate's. That's all good. What is it in? <laughs> business. Awesome. Yeah. I'm like a couple of credits short of uh, <laughs> associates in the business administration. Oh, okay. But I said, no, thank you. I'll yeah. pass. But it's cool, yeah. though. I appreciate that. That's freaking dope. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, the retail, you kind of sort of got a little bit of an idea. And then kind of sort of from there, you started just began to styling yourself. Yeah. For creative, creative form of self-expression. Okay. Yep. Awesome. And is there merch that you're planning to do with other knowledge that you have? Done you know, something? I would love to do like a line of sunglasses uh -huh. and gloves one day. So so no shirts, no other yeah, garments? Yeah, shirts, that... caps, you know, all the basics um, that you would see. Yeah. T-shirts, caps, and posters. I would love to see them whenever you, you have them out. I'm okay. Boy, the pens. I, can't, I, I don't know if I can sport the pink ones like that. You can. But if any other ones you have, <laughs> you I am. I don't care. I'm down to it, whatever. But okay. I got to see if it goes with. Or maybe like a customized pair of jeans. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That because yeah. you also do that yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So who would you like to give any shout outs? Any shout outs that you have? All the listeners, you know, everybody tuning into your show. I love your show. I've watched it many times. Thank so you. Just, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in. Everyone over at, you know, KNON, all the MCs that I've worked with throughout all of Dallas. You know, I've done so much performing throughout the city. Um, the city has been just so good to me. The community has. So just thank thank you guys for that. Yeah. And do you have any other shows lined up here in the near future? Uh, yes. February 11th, I'll be in ULIS. ULIS? Yes. And I'll be posting that information up on on social media. So you don't have any information for that one yet? It's, it's at a venue I do don't recall the name at the moment, but it is with DFW Music, and it's going to be like a pre-Super Bowl kind of performance. So. Okay, so you've been doing a lot of uh, DFW Music, right? Mm -hmm. They've been uh, doing different shows. I, know, I don't know who they are. Yeah, and they do a lot of shows out of, like, Hall Temp Theater, and mm -hmm. I love that. It's a really cool venue. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a couple more questions, then I'm going to let you go. What is an important lesson, even though you've been young in the business, music business, but you can even talk about it in general about life. What is something important, a very important lesson that you learn that you would tell your younger self that will help somebody else? Like in my life now, a lesson if through the music? If you want to, if you wanted to talk about it, life in general or the music. Okay. Just definitely staying true to yourself. You know, as I mentioned before, believing in yourself and knowing that whatever it is, you always had it in you. It doesn't necessarily take something else for you to do that. You know, you have it in you. You just need to believe in yourself. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I was telling somebody else in the business that uh, a lot of the times now is not that. I mean, you still have to have the music and the talent, right? 
But a lot of the times, you, you really have to do the thing, the craft to or the other people would gravitate and believe that you are that, who you say you are. Absolutely. Because otherwise, it'd be like, eh, just another guy. Yeah. Just another girl. Just Absolutely. another whatever. Right. Yeah. From um, growing up and, you know, being just, you know, a girl, a little girl with dreams to do music and kind of <laughs> sort of imagine that you will be doing it one day and, you know, singing through a the paper towel roll <laughs> to, you know, being in the choir and kind of sort of like letting that dream die out a little bit, but then things happen, life happen. And within the net last two years, uh, I usually like to have people that have been doing it longer, five or so, to know they're committed. But I don't know that I just seen something in you as far as being consistent and always working and different things like that that has, uh, made me want to reach out. And, and I reached out to... Um, to come out and, and share your story and highlight you as a person of all the things you're done. Because you not only are you doing the music, but you really, I don't know if you use Google or how you get your information <laughs> uh, or YouTube as right. far as finding the knowledge as far as what it takes to be an artist or or do that. Right. But you definitely do that. And from coming from where you came from to being to where you're at within the time frame and, and really reaching the world. Because to me, the global land factor is really everything that we're done and reaching the world, You're, there's no doubt for me that you are a global Latin factor. So, Crystal Scars, Thank you are you. a global Latin factor. Thank you for being Straight here. Straight up. Thank you. Last question before I let you go. This time for real because I'm full <laughs> of questions. Is, uh, many years from now, if somebody was to look you up, Google you, or some kind of search engine many years from now, what do you hope for them to find about you, uh, about your life or, or anything? Um, definitely just, again, you know, that I live my life to fulfill my purpose um, in the music industry and hopefully a lot of Grammys under my belt at that point. So, yeah. yeah. You're definitely shooting for the Grammys for sure. I mean, I think so. Why not? Yeah. Well, at least possible. one. <laughs> Everything's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. This was another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast. Remember, we're just like you. We're people. We are the spice in this melting pot. It is the world. Until next time. Thank you. Thank you very much for checking out another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast. Make sure you go and subscribe to the channel. You are very important, and it means a lot to us whenever you go and subscribe and hit the bell so you can get notifications whenever we have new episodes. It really does truly mean a lot to us. Thank you very much. One, what is the la vigo? Walks like a pedo, but in fact is a flamingo. Coming to Havana and from Puerto Rico. On a pirate ship, he don't know where do we go. The birds of the jungle chasing fortune and fame. But... Thank <laughs> you.